Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku. And we're here to break down some fake news. 2020 is set to be one of the three hottest years on record, despite La Nina's cooling effect, report says. This being reported by the Communist Network News. Let's dive into the article. Record wildfires... A deadly hurricane season, Arctic sea ice at its lowest ever. Droughts, floods, and heat waves. We are all going to die. Well, in 2020, this is going to be the hottest three years ever. Well, let's start off with the wildfires. Now, they claim in the, the beginning article that there's record wildfires. And you could see the U.S. wildfire data showing that, well, they're so far off the mark, it's not even arguable. Now, clearly this data set only goes up to 2018, but there is no such spike as the one back here in the 30s or the estimated back prior to that. So that's the first tip-off. Second one is a deadly hurricane season. Well, you could just come over to Global Tropical Cyclone Activity by Dr. Ryan N. Maui, who is the foremost authority on hurricanes. And let's just take a look. What we can see here quickly on the first graph is that global major hurricane frequency has decreased since the 90s. Global major hurricane frequency decreased since the 90s. Second graph, global tropical cyclone accumulated energy. This has been dropping off since 1992. And the final graph is global tropical cyclone frequency. All of them. And that spiked back in the 70s. And has been dropping off ever since. Now, we did get up to 104, which is similar to the mid-90s, early 90s, and the 80s. But still not more than the 70s. So not one aspect of global tropical cyclones has increased at all worldwide. What else do we want to break down? Well, that's hurricane frequency. How about the global temperature? Let's talk about that. It's 0.53 degrees C above baseline since 1979. So in 50 years, we're a half a degree above the average which is within standard deviation of the actual temperature. So nothing to see there. And let's just go check out Greenland ice, which has been rapidly building ice for the last three months. Hasn't lost a single drop. Gained seven gigatons of ice just earlier this week. 10 gigatons of ice in a record increase back in early November. The mainstream doesn't report on record ice in Greenland ever, do they? And let's talk, talk about sea ice thickness. They've changed the standard deviation to only go back to 2004. That's a 16-year data set. Do you know why they want you to see only 16 years? Because it makes this ice year look low when it's not. It's, in fact, a fraud. And if they actually went back prior to 1979, they would be showing much less ice in the early 70s, including some of the least ice ever in the Arctic in 1974. But they scrubbed that from the records. They scrubbed it from the records. And do you think the kids that are pictured here that are studying climate science know about that? They were born decades after those records were even made. Now, where were we? Records, yes. And missing, and missing scrub data. Now, year after year, more and more data is falling off the internet on purpose so that um, independent investigators like myself can't easily access it. We have to save all this data. And you can he see here, this is this year, the total snow mass for the northern hemisphere. Total snow mass is above a multi-decadal running average. Multi-decadal running average. 40 years of data, and it's above all of those years so far, the entire fall. Huh. And let's get back to the temperature. The problem with climate scientists is they only study the last 100 years. You need to be a geologist and a paleoclimatologist to, just un to begin to understand how 
stupid and insane these people are. They actually have degrees in something called climate science, which is based on CO2, not geology and paleoclimatology. It's based on the false premise that CO2 warms Earth. And people pay money for this garbage. Now, the top of this red is global warming. And what you should notice is that it is the coldest in the last 10,000 years in all of paleoclimatological record, except for a slight aberration back here around 8,200 years ago, where it might have been colder. But other than that, it's the coldest it's been in 10,000 years. And that's not it. Here's the last 65 million years. And we're here at zero. It's the coldest it's been in the last 50 million years. And that's not all. Here we are right here. It's the coldest it's been in the last 270 million years. And these people at university studying climate science never had a moment in their four years to figure this out. Well, let's talk about who's lying to us. Let's talk about that. Everyone. In fact, it's been proven that global warming data has been faked by the governments around the world to fit climate change fictions, especially the bomb in Australia and NASA and NOAA here in the US, all complicit in the lies. And then there's the puppets like Al Gore selling books, making millions of dollars off the 97% myth, getting fatter every year. And then there's the green movement that Al Gore has everything to do about which has claimed that wind turbines and solar energy is the clean future that you're looking for. Well, that's a lie too. Everything is a lie. They know it, and now you know it. Now, what will you do about it? Probably nothing. But it's nice to know that everything you know is a lie. And that's a boom to knowledge. Be safe. We love you.